so in this video i'll discuss permeability of your soil okay and then the darcy's law related to your permeability and finally how to apply or the application of this permeability in civil engineering okay so for discussing all of this point i have taken a problem from gate 2013 well in this problem here you can see this in this figure the sand layer is under artesian pressure and above it there is a silt layer okay and you have to find the inflow of water from the sand layer to this lake through this silt layer okay so let's start let consider a soil sample okay let's say this is your soil sample this are the soil particle agree now let's say if you insert a piezometer or a standpipe here the head indicated is let's say this is h1 okay and at this end let's say the head is indicated as h2 okay so due to this difference of head of course the water will travel from this end to this end now how the water travel of course the pores here the interconnectivity of the pores create a path within the soil itself and the water travels through this path let's say the water velocity through this path is v1 and water velocity through another path like this let's say this is another path let's say the velocity through this path is v2 and like that numerous number of velocity exist within this soil now if i take average of all of this velocity of course that is indicated by an average velocity let's say this is something like k and this is the permeability of soil so the permeability is a measure of easiness of flowing water through this soil material now we can say that this permeability is a function of two thing first one is your pores within this soil and second one is the interconnectivity of this pores okay and if you think that if a soil material is this is interconnectivity now if you think that if a soil has very much or if a soil is too much for us it will have larger permeability or the water will flow more easily through that soil you are completely wrong okay because let's say this is a pores and there is some obstruction again there is a pores again there is some obstruction like this so the water come from this point to this point and then it cannot percolate anymore due to this obstruction or there is no interconnectivity between this pores and this pores so both of these parameters are very much important for your better permeability of soil now before diving into the permeability in more details we have to learn the heads three heads first one is what is datum head okay second one is what is pressure head pressure head and last one is what is piezometer head or piezometric head okay now consider any fluid let's say this is a fluid and this is the base consider any point within this fluid let's say point a this is the top of fluid and the fluid is flowing with velocity v at least at this point or at point a the velocity of the fluid is b now if i ask you what is the total head well you can answer it the total head is first is pressure head that is p by gamma or h because the pressure at this point is gamma h this is pressure and when i am talking about pressure head we have to divide the pressure divided by the gamma or unit weight of the fluid this is pressure head this is pressure head next is datum head if this is datum 
okay or the reference line with respect to which we are measuring the height of the point that is z this is z or datum head and last one is your velocity head that is v square by 2g where v is the velocity of the fluid but in case of permeability the velocity or this v1 or v2 or something else these are so small that we can neglect v square by 2g term so in case of permeability we can say that our total head is equal to pressure head or h and the datum head or z and the summation of this pressure head and datum head is known as your piezometric head okay the summation of h and z is known as piezometric head now take an example okay to better understand all of this pressure head and your datum head consider a soil sample like this let's say this is our soil sample and let's say this is composed of primarily silt okay at the bottom of this silt layer let's say there are some sand layer like this okay and at the top of the silt layer there is free water standing this is free water and let's say our datum is here this is our datum this is our datum or reference line with respect to which we will measure everything so this is sand layer and this sand layer is under artesian pressure so if you insert a stand pipe at this point of course you will get some pressure head let's say that pressure head is denoted by your h now consider the length of this silt layer is l and at the top of the silt layer if you again insert a stand pipe the pressure head is indicated by this height okay corresponding to this water level let's say this is your h2 and this is h1 here the datum head of this point is z1 and here the datum head is z2 okay so what is the total head at this point the total head at point 1 is simply the datum head that is z1 plus the pressure head that is your h1 okay and similarly at point 2 or at this point what is the total head so total head at point 2 is first datum head that is z2 plus pressure head that is h2 so what is the head difference the head difference or your delta h is simply total head at point 1 minus total head at point 2 or we can say that z1 plus h1 minus z2 plus h2 this is the head difference between point 1 and point 2 of course this is greater than 0 from this figure it is clear and due to this head difference water will flow from this point to this point so upward flow will occur within this soil sample or within this silt what is the length of this silt so the length is l so what is the hydraulic gradient gradient is you know that if length is l let consider any slope this is the height h this is l so what is this gradient this gradient is simply h by l just like that here your hydraulic gradient which is expressed by i is equal to delta h by l okay so due to this hydraulic gradient the water flow will occur through this silt now what is the velocity of the water flow as per darcy's law he is saying that velocity is proportional to this hydraulic gradient that is i now if you remove this proportional sign you can say that velocity is equal to k times 
i and here this k is known as your coefficient of permeability okay so what is darcy's law darcy is saying that velocity through the soil is proportional to the hydraulic gradient and it is equal to k times hydraulic gradient where k is coefficient of permeability so if you know the value of coefficient of permeability and hydraulic gradient you can calculate the velocity of water by which the water will flow from this point to this point okay now come to the problem so here first is we have to find out the total head at this point and at this point of course if you here insert a stand 5 the pressure head will be indicated like this okay now first consider your point 1 at this point 1 what is total head so total head at point 1 is first datum head this is z1 plus your pressure head from this point to this point okay so this is your h1 or pressure head so z1 plus h1 and from this point to this point what is the total length that is 40 minus 40 plus 10 so total 50 meter okay this is the total head at point 1 now consider point 2 this is point 2 at this point what is datum head datum head is this one z1 and what is pressure head this is your pressure head or h2 so total head at point 2 is coming as z2 plus h2 now from this point to this point this is your 10 20 30 plus this one that is 40 so this is coming as 40 meter so what is the difference in head so head difference delta h is coming as 50 minus 40 meter or your 10 meter and what is the length of this sealed sample this is 10 plus 10 so 20 meter l is coming as your 20 meter so now you can calculate the hydraulic gradient the hydraulic gradient i is coming as delta h by l or 10 by 20 the value of coefficient of permeability or k is known to you so k is also known to us 10 to the power minus 6 meter per second so from here you can calculate v is equal to k times i or it is coming as 0 0.5 times 10 to the power minus 6 meter per second and the question is you have to find out the quantity of water in meter cube per second so you have to find the value of q q is equal to a times b where a is the cross-sectional area now what is the cross-sectional area as per this problem you have to take per unit area so a is 1 b is 0.5 times 10 to the power minus 6 meter cube per second so q is coming as 0.5 times 10 to the power minus 6 meter cube per second this is the flow of water from sand layer to this lake through this silt layer